All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at Linux in the real world. So here's the thing. If you are one of these folks that are spending thousands of dollars on training, you don't have to do that, right? Period. So in the real world, Linux can be learned on all of the resources available on the internet. Now, the challenge with that is finding something structured and organized. That's where the challenge becomes a, a difficult thing, to be honest, because when I first started learning Linux years ago, back in 2007, all of the resources that are available today didn't exist back then. You had to go to the store and buy a book, Barnes and Noble or the library or something like that. And it's just not as easy as it, as it is today. So they have websites like Linux Journey. So before you go out and jump out there and spend eight to $10,000 or 5,000, I mean, it's just so insane when I hear people paying this kind of money to learn Linux. When I first learned Linux, I didn't pay a dime. I, I got a book. I mean, someone said I didn't pay a dime. I think the book was like 10 bucks, you know, nine nine ninety nine or something like that. Then I started, you know, going through the process of learning and then finding, even back then it was plenty of online tutorials, but it was more text-based. It wasn't as many videos. YouTube wasn't popular then like it is now. So, I mean, look at a website like this, Linux Journey, that has all of the fundamental basics that you can follow step by step to just get started. What is a distribution? What is Debian? What is Red Hat? So let me just kind of explain some of these topics real quick, right? So in the real world, what you're gonna see in a real work environment from an enterprise level, you're going to see a lot of Red Hat, right? So Red Hat Enterprise Linux is the de facto enterprise solution that is used by a lot of businesses, government agencies all around the world, not just in the United States. There's a lot of usage of SUSE uh, Enterprise Linux overseas. There is usage of it in the U.S., but you would be served better to learn Red Hat before you mess with uh, anything with SUSE. And CentOS used to be very popular for uh, free, a uh, free rebuild option of Red Hat Enterprise Linux used a lot by companies. Well, CentOS support is gone, right? You may have some companies use it in here and there, but not that many. So Red Hat has now with they've they've made it where you can learn on up to, I think, about 16 uh, servers on your own through their Red Hat uh, enterprise developer uh, solution, uh, not enterprise, but but their developer Red Hat. I'd have to go look on it. Who, who cares? But Rocky Linux allows you to learn everything that you need to learn from the Red Hat rebuild 100 percent bug for bug compatible with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And you can learn everything that you need to learn using Rocky Linux. You can deploy it in the enterprise environment. You can use it for your labs, everything, right? Um, you can use it to study for exams, but you also want to make sure that you're learning Red Hat itself with the Red Hat operating system for the exam purposes, et cetera, because you just want to make sure that you're fully ready to go. Now, another operating system that you're going to see in a work environment, especially used by developers or, or testing and even servers and, and uh, you know, Docker containers or containerization and stuff like that, Kubernetes, et cetera, is going to be Canonical's Ubuntu. So those are the two that are most popular that you're going to see in actual work environments. I saw a lot of Ubuntu overseas, uh, a lot. Now, you may also see Debian because it's very stable. You may see Debian in some work environments and some businesses, right? And you'll get a lot of rebuilds off of the Debian operating system. Now, <laughs> people that are in cybersecurity, they will talk about Kali Linux, right? So Kali Linux is one of these distributions that is based off of Debian, and they basically customize it to fit the requirements for the cybersecurity um, uh, professionals, right? But Kali Linux is an entry-level you know, basic operating system to go in, but you have parent security. Now, I'm not going to try to go through every distribution that's used for every different kind of scenario because there's hundreds of them. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so uh, parent security is another one that's used. There, there's so many different ones that are used, you, you know, Arch Linux, et cetera. So let's, let's just not go into that right now. Now, another option that you can use for learning purposes is the Cisco Network Academy. That allows you to get the Creedly badge to be able to go and add to your LinkedIn account, right? It gives you some credibility that you have some of this skill set and you've learned and you go ahead and upload your Creedly badge to LinkedIn.
right? And it's helpful. So as somebody who has helped screen and interview and hire candidates, me seeing that you had some kind of background and you have some kind of knowledge and learning, not everybody has the money to go to college. So especially if you're new to the field. So you want to have the ability to demonstrate and show that you have some of that um, online uh, ability skill through the internet, through your branding and set up something like a link tree, right? And it'll have like your social media, your branding, something related to that background in Linux. If you're gonna do Linux, DevOps, cloud, you need to have that branding in place. And that's just where competition is at today. So it's not about taking your word for it, but it allows somebody to see your background before they bring you in for an interview. And then the interview allows you to demonstrate your skill by answering their questions, which may be star method, scenario based. They may have you do a lab. There's so many different options uh, that, that can be tested and validated. Another solution is something like LabX where you're doing step-by-step -step hands on exercises. So there's so many ways that you can demonstrate your knowledge of Linux in the real world. And I really would heavily emphasize uh, something like LabX. Also, CoCloud Engineer is, is one other option that would allow you to demonstrate your skill and your ability to actually complete tasks and complete projects and get the hands on that would allow you to answer the questions. So this is a huge resource that wasn't around years ago, right? And it's available today. So if you're starting with Linux new, make sure that you're following some kind of structure. So Shays Tech now has a structured course that's being built out and is going to be uh, completely launched. It's already launched, but it's still being built out and, and finalized in a structured manner. But at the same time, there's so many resources available. There's so many YouTube channels where you can learn step by step please do not go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars. Decide on a plan for discipline. You can use Chase Tech. That's one other option for you where you can follow a step-by-step -step structure. And <laughs> it's, it's not going to cost you an arm and leg. It's not going to cost you 150 not going to cost you 20 bucks. not even going to cost you $15, right? Just to sign up and follow a step-by-step -step structure and, and make sure that you're learning everything that you need to learn. But at the end of the day, what I will advise anybody in the real world is to do hands on labs, right? Something like code cloud engineer, which is free and open to everyone. Something like LabX, where at some point it's going to charge you something for unlocking labs. So that's the biggest thing or download virtual box on your local uh, machine. I use Linux at home. Uh, you may have windows at work. You may have a Mac, whatever, and start to actually learn because if you're going to do DevOps, if you're going to do, uh, networking. If you're going to do cybersecurity, you need to be comfortable with Linux. No one's saying you have to be an expert, but you need to be comfortable with the operating system and you need to know how to navigate it, how to work on it, how to how to find files, how to install applications, how to find issues and, and, and how to troubleshoot things. And that's just how it works in the real world. All right. So I hope this is helpful. And I'll go ahead and drop all of these links inside of this uh, video. And We'll see you soon. All right. Linux in the real world. <laughs>